Hey guys, this is going to be another episode of my series on learning a five-string violin. Uh, a bunch of things I want to cover in this video are going to be um, how to connect your notes and your melodies and your short notes and longer notes, your string crossings in that process, and how the weight of the bow and how um, your contact point uh, needs to exactly respond to those different situations that you're going to need to play through. And my, my personal approach is that I improvise a lot and I don't play in a classical style, it's more of like a fiddle or sort of mixed style. So I'm going to, show, I'm going to try to show examples from multiple styles that you can play uh, to build up these routines and build up a practice regimen that helps you start to intuitively make the correct decisions that keep your bow balanced and keep your tone consistent. I hope that makes uh, makes sense before we forget. Now I just want to um, I just want to show a bunch of the exercises before I get talking for too long. Uh, before I do start, I'm going to say that uh, this is going to be the last video I hopefully shoot with these set of strings. I'm going to shoot another video soon, hopefully, with my new pack of strings. Um, these are almost two years old strings. These are Daddario Prelude strings, but they lasted a really long time because I cleaned the rosin off very diligently every single time, so nothing is sitting and degrading on the strings. Um, what I'm going to show you to start is even playing without rosin. This is something that I did for a while to try to explore. This is an idea. I was playing with no rosin at all. So this is my Baroque bow. It's a little bit tight, um, but it's gonna. you're going to see how the, the lightness really affects the smoothness of your string transitions and your, the connections of your note. And it, it kind of sort of dovetail hopefully into a conversation of how that physics really occurs and how do we consciously control that contact, which is pretty much the essence of the whole problem of violin, in my, in my experience so far anyway. So the hard part is keeping everything connected. So how do we do this to start? Let's say an example of an unconnected phrase would be just like notes, just like riff. Like, Sometimes how it, the, there's more chaos and there's more tendency to skid when you're back here by the, the frog of your bridge um, and when your, your posture is slight, it gets slightly lost in some way. So one thing I do to always correct my posture is recently it's been, uh, it's been really working for me, but I actually have my attention kind of in my lower back so that as a rag doll, your whole body is a bit of a rag doll, right? If you're slouched like this, but say that your lower back is actually kind of flexed and everything is you have a little bit more equality between your feet and both of your limbs, which is what you really need to maintain your posture and maintain um, your movements. So I start at my lower back, which may seem funny, but that's that's just what I've been doing recently with a lot of success, uh, in my head anyway. <laughs> um, try to play this right into the microphone here and I'll do the same when I change the strings so hopefully the microphone right here on the phone will be enough of a reference for you guys to hear the difference when the when I do change the strings for the next episode. Um, for now though you, know, you can you can really notice the difference between how quiet and easy it is to control here and how difficult and how much louder it is to control here at the bridge. <laughs> Something about the weight of the entire bow falling, and something about just how how sp how springy it really isn't. Funny enough, it is springy, isn't it? It's really springy right here at the bottom. So like you notice just the difference. So much response that is going to send your bow off in a funny direction is a result of the bounce of the pushing in and the bow actually wanting to fly off in the opposite direction. So um, the precision of your contact point and the precision of your movements is gonna help prevent that bounce, which you don't want, unless you're really just using it as part of your stroke to propel yourself out of the note as well. I mean, that's one way. Say that you're 
um, playing really aggressive riffs and chops and stuff. Maybe it's useful there. Um, but you know, when I start to play a, a melody, say I try to play a basic melody, like a song from a TV show or a movie that I might know, sometimes, you know, those finer parts of it are deceptively difficult to keep in, in control, to keep them in control. Hopefully that demonstrates a bit of the sound. You know, on such a cheap instrument, you can still get a very nice and precise sound if you use the right amount of weight and the right kind of precision. You can still get quite a sound out of a cheap bow with no rosin literally on it and a cheap violin. Um, I'm gonna play my standard bow now. The standard bow is hard to sound well without any rosin because it's so much heavier, obviously. Um, but I'm gonna do that for fun now, just just to show. Uh, <laughs> Then I will rosin it up and then I will play some more standard examples. I, I want to keep focusing on stuff that you can practice, so I, w I don't want to talk too much. I know that I talk a lot when I do these, but I want to try to focus on stuff that you can repeat and try. scales and kind of uh, just fractions of scales and random little riffs. I do that a lot in my practice because it's just fun. It's like sitting and doing, I don't know, it's like doing a puzzle for me or like it's, it's any kind of repetitive re activity is fun. I'm kind of like knitting it through, like imagine you were neat, like, like threading a little needle and it has to go through a very specific channel um, to make the sound correctly. And on the five string, the note, the strings are quite close together, right? So for me to hit the top E string, and uh, this is tuned to F right now, if I kind of mentioning I'm in the score of tour. Mm. But so when I only want to hit that one string, the angle that I have to be on to not hit this part and to not hit the other string is, is quite small. And um, the bounce, like I said, is a huge thing that was holding back my continuity of my my phrases. The bounce was really affecting my 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 string crossing, especially over to the top string. See, so yeah, I miss a little bit at the start of some of those notes. psychologically as well, something that you've had a problem with uh, is going to continue to cause a little bit of apprehension before you even start those notes, right? So to improve the intuitive, the improvised kind of nature of it, I needed to, to work a lot on exercises that were going to retrain my, retrain my string crossings so that I was doing them correctly. One of the things that I focused on the most is just keeping it up here when I'm doing my crossings, not letting my Movements get big and exaggerated rock star style movements. Those do not help you when you're trying to do a connected melody. I also want to play a lot of arpeggios in my technique when I get finished one day, when I'm finished. 
uh, I want to play a lot of arpeggios and be able to have the freedom to play chords and stuff. So uh, that's a really advanced technique in most classical repertoire, but for me, it's just how I want to learn how to sound, really. I'm going to put rosin on this now to compare the volume. So as we rosin this again, uh, I'm just going to go once or twice over it, and like I said, I'm using the Parastro rosin, which I think sounds the best for me anyway. Just a little bit. And I'm going to sort of lean, I mentioned the bow angle and where I'm, whether I'm playing to the, this side or that side of the bow in the last video. Um, and I want to mention that I also kind of rosin the forward edge of it a little bit more because I know that that's the edge that I want to have in contact. That I want to be smoothed out. You'll notice also that as you start, obviously the rosin has to build on the strings and you want it really on the strings more than, you, than it needs to be on the bow because that's your contact surface, like your canvas. The rosin becomes the canvas that you're playing on. Um, so you'll, when, you're, when you're starting your day, your practice, you kind of want to go over them equally to get some on each string. So I'm going to just do some one note at a time coordination exercises on each string to warm up for a second here. trying to build your intonation initially, right? I would take that as like my initial uh, tuning reference and then I kind of just fill in all of the notes and try to see how many times I can get them just exactly right. Because a lot of times you're going to be slightly out of tune, right? But you get them as close, close as you can. sound coming through there still. Um, there's rosin on here now so it sticks a little bit more and um, it eliminates some of that initial that you can get, some of that initial. You get more of that when there's not rosin already, right? So your canvas isn't complete yet. So when I make a mistake I'm more likely to get that sound the the more weight is in it, the less rosin, maybe the less prepared the, the strings are. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm trying to continually make a checklist of things that produce the errors so that I can then avoid them, hopefully. Um, so let's uh, break down one of these exercises and how I complexify it, right? So a basic version, if I was going... So, I don't have a metronome on right now, but you want, might want to practice with your metronome or with a looper or your keyboard arpeggiator or something like that to keep you in tune and keep you in time. Those things are all really helpful. Um, but then once you have that basic uh, clockwork going, then where do you go from there within your exercise? Or if you were in a song, how would you transition out of that into a different phrase or melody? Uh, when I transition out of it, I just, I'm always trying to remember to keep my angle, my edge, a bit forward, right? And I'm trying to keep it a little bit around here. I'm not slamming my bow down around here very much anymore. I'm trying to keep it motionless almost and go right here. People talk about collé, your finger exercises. So uh, they talk about even not moving your arm very much at all. I'm trying to play with your wrist. Almost all of that tone, I was barely moving my arm. And so how do you go from freezing your arm for a very accurate part to going back into a full swing for a, a louder and more melodious part?
Hopefully that shows a bit of what I'm, what I'm speaking of. Uh, I mentioned before my lower back and my lower back is helping me keep my feet equally planted and keep my arms equally weighted so that my attention isn't just over focusing on one side and one, one uh, compromising one side of my body for the sake of focus and then losing the flexibility of all of them together. Um, so I'm focusing on my lower back. I'm focusing on my, my bow point where it's on, if it's on here or whether it's on here. I'm working on my angle like my keeping it keeping it forward, like it was a sword, like you were slashing it with the sword this way, almost forward. That helps sometimes too. Um, and I'm always comparing the volume level and the smoothness of my, my notes and my lines, whether I'm going across the strings or I'm just legato on one string, or I'm even you know, legatoing across the strings. That's something that you know could be considered uh, advanced or it can be considered uh, cheating, you know, for me, Sometimes I would go down the strings and be legatoing my way through all my scales and arpeggios and I would be having great fun doing that, but I would, uh, wouldn't be preparing my notes in the exact ways that I need to prepare them to be versatile. Hopefully some of those points all make sense together. Um, I'm going to cover obviously the, the new pair of strings on the next video and a few more points on these topics that hopefully are helpful to anybody watching. I uh, hope you enjoy if you stick around for this whole thing, and I hope you guys have a great week. Stay tuned for the next episode.